Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. This is one of the most important verses in the Bible to me. It's one of the most uh, uh, different verses. Uh, it's got three words in it. The word blotting, the word handwriting, and the word nailing. Three words that's only found in the Bible one time. All three of them are found in that one verse. The word nailing is only in the Bible one time. The word blotting is only found in the Bible one time. And the word handwriting is only found in the Bible one time. This verse is very important. Let me read it to you. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Let's pray. Lord, come to you in Jesus' name. I pray, God, you'd help us today to realize that you are able to blot out all of our transgressions. As if they'd never been done. Justified as if I'd never sinned. Oh, thank you, sweet Jesus. God, I pray you'd help us today to realize that you can cover it all, cleanse it all, blot it all out, remove it, and never be brought up or mentioned again. I'm glad our sins are gone. Lord, well, save that one here today. Help them to put their faith and trust in Jesus yeah. today yeah. that their sins might be blotted out. In whose name we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you about this uh, blotting. I want to talk to you about the blotter. A few little pieces of information. The word erase is not in the Bible anywhere. God don't make mistakes. He needs no eraser. Amen. Amen. But he does have a blotter. That can blot out your sins. Yeah, right, right. He makes no mistakes. He needs no eraser. But he's got a big, red, bloody blotter yeah. that can blot out all your sins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Amen. The word blot means to erase or cancel. And then uh, old David, when he sinned against uh, Bathsheba's and her father and her grandfather, the hit fail, and sinned against her husband, Uriah the Hittite, and committed adultery with her and had a, got her pregnant. And then he tried to cover it up by killing her husband and marrying the wife, though everybody thought the baby was his, which it was, was conceived out of wedlock. And God put a four, four-way curse upon old David. But when David finally got preached to by a man named Nathan, he said, Thou art the man. Yeah. Yeah. David's heart broke. Yeah. He went down to the house of God and repented. And Psalms 51, if you'd like to read it sometime, is David's prayer of repentance after Bathsheba. Two times in that scripture he mentioned the word blot. <clears throat> Verse 51, 1 says, According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. And also in Psalms 51, verse 9, as David prayed for repentance, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. And God did that. For a man named David, who took a man's wife, killed her husband, lied about it, deceived about it, but God's man knew about it, preached about it, David humbled himself and repented. If God forgive David for such a terrible thing as that, he surely will forgive you. Yes. Blot it out. I want to talk about the blotter. In Isaiah 44, verse 22, God said, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. And as a cloud thy sins, return unto me, I have redeemed thee. And in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19, Peter preaching, he said this, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. I'd like to give you information today. Your sins can be blotted out. Amen. One of the greatest things, my mother died at 90 years old. Now, I, I didn't want to see her die, but I'm going to say this, and, and I mean it. I'm glad she died before she found out how low down I was. <laughs> My mother died without knowing how far down I'd gone. Now she'll never know it because they're blotted out. If you can invent a stain remover, you'll be automatically, immediately a millionaire. A stain remover. If you can invent a stain remover, you'll be famous in no time. 
I'd like for me and you to get together sometime. You invent a acid that'll eat up anything. And I'll invent something to carry it in. <laughs> what do you mean, preacher? I'm telling you that only Jesus can blot out your sin. Amen. There's not a man on earth yeah. can blot out your sin. Right. Not a priest, pope, or preacher can blot out your sin. Right. There's not a nobody nowhere can take care of your sin but the lovely Lord Jesus. And his blood can blot out all your sins. Amen. What I'm going to do about the handwriting on the wall? Yeah, yeah. Trust in him who can blot out it all. Yeah, yeah. That's him, man. Yeah. Uh, with that said, I'm going to proceed. Over here on this, uh, uh, in this little outline here, God, our need for forgiveness. There's 726 sins listed in the Bible. There's over 2,000 in there, but listed is 726 sins listed in the Bible. God can take that bloody blotter and blot them, every one of them out. Yeah. Every one of them. Our need for forgiveness. A mate chisholm one time, she got a letter to Laura Lake Dreamer in her house. She got saved, joined the church, baptized, lived for God, a great woman. And she's a sister, uh, Esther Turner, Beach Turner's wife. Anyway, she was a great Christian. And she gave my daughter a Bible, white back Bible, and, and uh, King James Version, of course. And, and in the back was all sorts of, of pictures. But you couldn't make the heads or tails out of the pictures. Because it's a red line, blue line, green line. just. But when you took this red cellophane paper and put it on top of it, it made a beautiful scene from the Bible. That's the way God does us. You are a mess. A hodgepodge of filth. Ungodly, greasy, goofy, goofy guts from a gopher. Nasty and unfil un un ungodly and filthy. As, as rags, and the Bible says as a menstruous nap. As a leper's garment. We're dirty, filthy, wicked sinners that ought to be burning in hell, but we're not. Why? Because God's mercy and grace. Yeah. He can blot out your sins. Sure and when you put that red blood over your record, it Thank blots you. it all out. Yeah. The bloody blotter blots it, all, blots it all out. And another idea you might get an idea of, but years ago they had what they called 3D movies. Yeah. And the movie was a mess. But when he put the glasses on, yeah. it became an yeah. exciting movie. Mm -hmm. When God sees you, he sees you as a sinner deserving of judgment and hell. But when you get saved by the grace of God, trust in the blood of Christ, yeah. the blood blots out your sin and God sees you as pure, yes. clean, yeah. perfect, right. and holy. He sees you as he sees his only begotten son. The Bible says so in the book of Malachi. He aspires you as he aspires his own son who serves him. Yes. Just as sure as Jesus We'll be in heaven forever. I'll be there with him. Amen. He's going to spare me like he spared his own son. I'm just as saved, sanctified, and filled the Holy Ghost you can get. I'm just as saved, just pitiful. <laughs> yeah. The devil said so, yes. amen. We need forgiveness. All are guilty. All are sinners. We need to be saved. Yeah. Now, many different transgressions against both tables, Old Testament, New Testament, yeah. statutes, ordinances, laws, rules, regulations, sacrifices, new moves, feast days. We've sinned in every way. We're a sinner, body, soul, and spirit. We've sinned against God in every way we can. Yeah. Some of us worse than others. Yeah. That's why I tell you, that mama didn't find out about me before she died. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's so good. He's so good. Amen. We all sin. Our sins are numerous. And God knows them every one. He knows them by the day, by the hour, by the minute, by the second, by the year, by the month. He knows every moment of every, your life you've ever lived. But when he forgives you, washes your sins away by the blood of Christ, he says, I'll remember them no more. Remember them no more. Can you imagine that? I still remember things that God done forgot. They trouble me from time to time. And I back up and I say, did you really do that, Sonny Moore? And he says, yeah, you did. But they're under the blood and you'll never be mentioned again. I'll never tell them and you'll never know them. I'm ashamed of them even yet, but they've yeah, yeah. been forgiven. Yeah, sir. But I want to show you something very quickly. Our sins are our own individual sins. You get responsible for your own sins. And as much as the number of hairs on your head. If you could number your sins, it'd take you from now till you die to number them. And you'd be, be sinning as you number them. Yeah, yeah. The impossible, my friend, to get your sins washed away any other way except through the faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
They're terribly wicked. They're our own willful sins. We did it willingly. Yep. We did it on purpose. Yep. Individually, knowing right from wrong. Yep. And we did it anyway. Yep. Like the old boy said, I know this liquor's killing me, but pour me another glass. <laughs> Dummy. You understand? You know it's wrong, but you do it anyway. Why in the world are we that weak? Weak? Why are we so weak? Yeah. Why is the flesh so weak? Why are we so empty-headed? One fellow said this uh, goes in one and out the other. Yeah, there's nothing between them. Stop it. That's the problem. We've got to get our mind right and our heart right. And realize if it's wrong, just don't do it. But we sin willfully. Therefore, we've got to repent willfully. They're terribly wicked because they're against a good. Gracious, wonderful God. Amen. A God who says he's love. Yeah. yeah, he says he's consuming fire. Yeah, he said he's holy and will not allow sin to enter in. All sin must be paid for by the blood of Jesus or you go to hell for it. Amen. Understand that. God loves sinners. And when you sin against a loving God, you ought to go to hell. Because the Bible says, says it. How much sore punch do you think they'd be worthy of who trample underfoot the Son of God? Do despite the Spirit of grace and call the blood with they sanctified an unholy thing. You ought to go to hell. You deserve, I deserve it. You know, we all deserve it. Because we sinned against a loving, holy God. He loves you so much, he sent his son to die for you. And if you trample on that blood, you ought to go to hell. On the bottom, shoving coals up. Heaping coals upon your own head, the Bible tells you. God loves sinners. And we're all sinners. And we trample underfoot the love of God. We are most men, most miserable, most wicked. It's terribly wicked when you sin against God. Now, if you sin against me, that ain't so bad because I'm bad too. But if you sin against God, you sin against the ultimate creator. Get that in just a moment. And our sins are recorded. Revelation chapter 20 verse 17 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, Stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead, the grave ain't going to hide you from judgment. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, whether you're saved or not is one thing. But on judgment day, you're going to be judged according to your works. For rewards or lost rewards, or for heaven or for hell. But the blood of Jesus is the only way you're going to be saved and go to heaven. There is a, going to be a judgment day and you will be there. And when you get there, you remember, old brother Mo told you, you're going to be there. You've got time to get ready. You better do it. Get ready or you're going to face the great God of heaven. And he's got the books. He's got it written down. Every jot, every tittle, everything, every word you ever said, he's got it. And if it's not being covered by the blood, it's still on the books. Talked to a man one time. He said, well, I quit running around with women. I quit drinking. I quit smoking. I quit cussing. I said, are you saved? He said, no. I said, then you're going to go to hell anyway. <laughs> you're not saved by quitting stuff. You're saved by trusting Christ by faith as your Savior. Right. Upon Amen. repentance and faith toward God. No created being can deliver us. Got to be Jesus. No priest, no prophet, no apostle, no saint, no angel. No, not even Virgin Mary. That's an out of busting truth, ain't it? Yeah. Jesus is the only name given under heaven among you where I must be saved. And Mary called Jesus Lord. Yeah. We all need a Savior, including Mary. She had a Savior named Jesus, the same one I've got. And when I get to heaven, Mary will be there, hallelujah. I'm glad she made it. But she didn't make it on her own merit. She made it on the merits of her son, Jesus yeah. Christ. It's the name of Jesus that counts. Yes. I'm glad. Thank you, Lord. Ain't you? Yes, right, very quickly, I'll tell you this. Christ alone, God's Son, has the power to forgive sin yes. and to blot out transgression. Remember the word blot. That's what I pretty blot. Blot. You know what you call a, somebody who puts paint on the wall? You call them a painter. Yes. You know what you call somebody who blots out sin? The blotter. God blots it out. Yes. The devil can't get to it. Hell can't get to it. You can't get to it. I can't just blot it out and never mention again. That thrills my soul. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of happy about that. 
There's things on my record that's been covered by the blood. Yeah. And if you could dig them up, you'd say, oh, my soul, let's go to another church. But because Christ cleansed me, I'm just as clean as you are. The blood, thank God, makes a difference. The blood makes a difference. The bloody blotter of the King of Kings doesn't cover up my sin and they'll never be mentioned again. I like that. The blotter's decoration. He said, let me go here this chapter 43 of, of Isaiah now. That's where I meant to go to. I done, done passed up something here. Isaiah 43, that's the chapter I want to preach out of after I got the little introduction there. Isaiah 43. This is a very great chapter, very good chapter. Isaiah 43. Here you go. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25, I, even I, this is God talking, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sin. Wow. God said, I, even I, am one that blots out your sins. I'm doing it. Even I'm doing it. And no man can find them. Never be brought to you. And over in the New Testament, Jesus said this, he said, and I, if I, be lifted up. I'll draw all men unto me. Now let me show you something in this chapter here of 43. In chapter 43, in verse 1, no, verse 15, God calls himself the creator. Right there. And then in verse 3, he calls himself Jehovah the Lord. In verse 3 also calls himself the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Verse 15, in verse 14 also the Holy One of Israel. And then in verse 14 he calls himself your Redeemer. Then over in verse 25 of the same chapter, he says, I am. Yeah. That ring of Moses note to anybody? I am. Yeah. Then he's called himself I, the, your Savior, verse 3. Then he calls himself your King, verse 15. God is everything we need to have and to be for to get us to heaven. Hey. He's everything. He's all of it. Yeah. What could you add to God to make him any better? Amen. He's everything you need. Yeah. If you'll trust him, He'll work everything else out. But preacher, what about my wife? Preacher, what about my children? Preacher, what about my job? You get Jesus and he'll handle the rest of it for you. He's the creator. He's the Lord. He's the Holy One. He's the Redeemer. He's the Savior. He's the King. He's the Great I Am. He's all you need. Just put your faith in him and he'll take it from there. The blotter's declaration. He said, I am I am the one that does it. God declares he will blot out your sins. He ain't going to lie to you. Put your faith and trust in him and slate's clean. Can you imagine having a clean slate? Starting all over like a brand new baby. No, you, ain't, you ain't said a cuss word yet. You ain't smoked cigarettes yet. You ain't sliced mama yet. You, you ain't done nothing. Sit there and suck your thumb. You ain't done a thing. Brand new baby. The Bible calls us babes in Christ. Because you ain't supposed to stay a baby. You're supposed to grow a little mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But thank you of yourself as somebody that God says, all right, everything, your past is gone. You ain't got no past. You're starting over today. I remember when that happened to me, April 19th, 1963, down in North Carolina, St. John Baptist Church. I got up off my knees a new creature. <laughs> Old things were definitely passed away and all things coming. I'm a, I'm a changed man. God will and can do it. I promise you it can be done with the help of Jesus Christ. You put your faith in him and he'll take up and go with you. A new creation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, it says that we have forgiveness of our sins that are past. There's not one thing from this day back yonder when I was born that you'll never be able to bring up against me. Not one thing. It's all gone. You know, when a baby's born, you have a baby, one of them, little, one of them baby showers. Bring a little bassinet, bring some blankets, bring some little boobies, and bring a whole bunch of diapers. <laughs> and you can give that baby a lot of things. There's one thing you cannot give a baby. You cannot give it a past. Because it's never been here before. Yeah. And when you get born again, you have no past. Amen. Amen. 
Preacher, I know what you used to do. Well, you know more than most people because I don't tell it. I used to. And I still ain't nowhere near perfect. But under God, by the blood, I ain't what I used to be. On my desk at home, I got a little bottle about that. It's called White Out. See, I make a lot of mistakes. Now, right up. Keep blotting it out and writing it Blot it out and writing But God, He blots it out, and you never can find it. The blotter. Can you think one? Just think one second. Get real deep with me. Your sins have been blotted out, and they'll never be remembered again. Yeah. Don't that excite you? Yeah. Unless you still love your sins. Some of you don't want them blotted out. You're still enjoying them. That's why you're miserable. Sick, sorry, sad, and sore. That's why you have no joy, no peace, no power. That's why you sitting here at church wishing one o'clock and get here. <laughs> if you still love your sins, <laughs> you've not been blotted right. right. Yeah. You need to be blotted right. right. Yeah. He alone can has the sovereign right to blot out your sins. Jesus possesses the mediator office of high priest to take away your sins. Through his power, through his name, through his blood, through his merit, through his work, we have forgiveness. God's infinite love and mercy prefers. He calls it his strange work to judge and destroy, to doom and to damn. That's his strange work. He don't want to do that. But he has to because he's holy. But you see, God prefers to blot out your sins. He don't want to try to get burned. He wants to. God loves you. He don't want to doom and damn your soul to hell. But you'll go there if you don't trust Christ. He said it. He's got to honor his word. He will not back up. But he will forgive and blot out your sin. And save your soul if you'll trust Christ. It's his strange work to bring judgment. He don't want to. He delights in mercy. He delights in grace. He wants to blot out your sins and save your soul. Why don't you trust him to do that? It's his infinite love and mercy. He prefers to blot out transgressions. He'd rather forgive you and save you, take you to heaven, but let you go to hell. That's why he sent his son to die. See how far God will go to bring you back to himself? The cross. God's infinite love and mercy prefers to blot out transgression. By faith, in the gospel of Christ, we realize the removal of our sins. I can stand before you this morning and tell you my sins are gone. Amen. Jesus one day going down the street and come to an old crippled iron. He said, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. An old boy jumped up healed. He's the one who found not only salvation for his body, for his sickness, but also was made whole from his sins. Have you ever heard the words in your heart, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee? I tell you, I'm glad my sins are gone. They was ugly. They, they made me miserable. I, I enjoyed them for a while, but that's why they got to be like a canker in my soul. The conclusion is simply this. Here is gracious words of pardon. Just as if you never done it. The Bible said we're justified from all things. That word all means all. Yeah. All sin. Yeah. Every sin. Any sin. Sin as a whole. Sin is behind us. Yeah. Sin's under the blood. Oh, yeah. Sin's in the depth of the sea. Praise Sin's as far as east is the way. Yeah. Sin behind God's back. Sin will never be brought up again against God's people. Now, the devil tries to work it back in every now and then and make you feel guilty, but thank God the blood takes care of that. Yeah. Amen. He blots them out utterly and forever. You know, the Pacific Ocean is 11,000 miles across. That's almost halfway around the world. That's a lot of water. And God said he cast your sins in the depth of the sea. 17 miles deep. And if man can't raise that gigantic Titanic, if they can't raise that thing out of two, two miles or five miles of water, who in the world is going to get down there and dig up my sins and resurrect them? They're gone. 
they're gone. They're gone. Thank God my sins are gone. <laughs> as far as these is in the West, directions that way, directions that way, they never meet. God forgives our sins. I'm so glad sins are forgiven. He blots them out utterly and forever. They're remembered no more. As a stone cast in the ocean. Gone. Gone. The blotter is complete. All past sins are blotted out. How attentively we should hear God speaking by the Holy Spirit. I, even I. I, even I. Who forgives your sins? God said, I, even I. <laughs> the Pope didn't do it, which he's a pretty good fellow, I think. The pastor didn't do it. He ain't no good. But Jesus can do it. I, even I, have forgiven your sins, blind them out. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. I. There's no excuse for the unbeliever. If you drop dead and go to hell, you are without excuse, says the Bible. While there's day, you better call upon the Lord. The Old Testament says God cast behind his back. In depths of sea, or east and west. But the greatest thing about sin is the Bible said the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. All in Christ. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I'll give you a quick illustration, I'm done. Every Wednesday, of course, it's going to be Thursday this week because of the holiday. Garbage truck comes rattling down through our road over at Santa Rosa. You hear him banging and clanging, banging and clanging, banging and clanging, and he stops. The hydraulic kicks in. That hand goes up there and grabs that garbage can, dumps it like that, and puts it back down. One of the, one of the most interesting money that I spend, me and my wife, is on garbage. <laughs> they haul that trash away for you. <laughs> Wonderful. You give them $120 a year and they, they haul all your garbage off. You can't beat that. <laughs> Let me tell you something that does beat it. John the Baptist stood one day in the middle of the Jordan River. Yes, yes. Here comes Jesus walking. Yes. <laughs> he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Who takes away the sin of the world. The greatest message I got for you today is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He'll load that joke up for you. And haul her away. Cast into the depth of sea behind God's back and never bring it up. You never have to smell it again. One fellow said, what makes a lot of noise? It has flies. I said, a garbage truck. <laughs> but Jesus Christ can haul your trash away yeah. and leave it smell like roses. Yeah. Yeah. Rose of Sharon, lily of the valley. Yeah. He takes all the filth, uh -huh. the corruption, the dirt, the nasty. He takes that all away and presents you blames before the Father, yeah. spirit, soul, and body. When God receives my soul into his presence, yeah. I'll go there. Clean, pure, yeah. sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you this morning just come and trust the blotter? Yeah. Yeah. Lord, would you blot out all my sins? He said, I, even I, will blot them out. If you'll come to him this morning, yeah. he'll blot them all out. I know it's late, but I don't care. Come on. Come on. One of these days I'm going to preach that message again and have a whole hour. But I want to tell you something. The blotter. He blots it out. Blots it out. And no man can get under there and find it out. It's gone. If you still love your sins, that's your problem. But if you'll confess them and repent, he'll blot them out. And you'll never feel guilty about them again. There's stop signs. Keep you from going that way again. But as far as answering for them two times, no. No, you'll never have to answer for them again.
They're gone. Let's stand. God help us. The blotter. He'll blot out your transgressions. Blot out your sins. 